something I admire about Derek <laughs> is their abruptness to opportunity. Our friendship has been extremely encouraging, creatively, imaginatively, full of love. Derek brings a force to their work that is powerful to witness. Uh, they are sensitized to the sentimental and the comical, to the circus of dramas big and small. They are considerate and patient, caring deeply for each person and thing that has come and gone. And you can hear that practiced in Derek's music and lyricism. They live energetically and offer that energy up like the best hug. And I am super grateful for each of our interactions. Grateful to introduce my good friend, Derek Simpson. Wow, dude. <laughs> oh my God. How are we going to even, you know, that's incre- That's so sweet. Thank you. Mm. First, I want everybody listening to know how great of an artist Josh is too. He did the artwork for King's Son and wrote the final and sings the final verse on hide and seek from we light a fire onward is josh just love each other dude what? <laughs> there's a lot it's of love so, it's so good do you want to do you want to like generally discuss the origins of the song yeah sure what about the like um cinematic sort of beginning I remember recording that on like a Saturday morning and that's predominantly just like, you know, the Korg SV1 that I have. That's mm. like sounds kind of straight from there through my pedal board. Like a lot of it isn't like the weird reverby effects and the like, you know, woo, 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 woo. like that stuff is just me like literally with my finger like my arm is stretched finger on like <laughs> on like one note on uh the SV1 and then my other hand is like just messing with the tape delay and that's just like layers of that i was like listening back to stuff that was inspiring me a lot some years ago and we've talked about underneath the pine so much Mm. there's so many moments of it just being like really groovy but then being like really kind of unsettling you know like i kind of wanted to hearken back to that i also love the element of like 70s movies or like any movies from from older time doesn't have to necessarily be 70s but and i was talking to my to alex my sister alex about this the other day like that sh- that things are just like creepy sometimes. It's like things can be really beautiful and intimate in a scene from something from a while ago, but it's almost like just the fact that it's a while ago and just that it's older, like the shooting style is outdated or something like that and the music is a little is a little dated too. That it just there's some kind of like creepiness to everything. Even if it's just a little bit, there's just like an element of like creepiness and I think I just was like kind of wanting to do that like 
adds some sort of unsettling thing or some sort of uncomfortability and it also feels like it's building to something totally different than what it builds to yeah, I feel yeah. like you know yeah 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 i mean the entrance of just such um luscious guitar tones after that is so like um settling in a nice way mm-hmm. um i mean i guess the whole song is sort of heavy on on guitar tracks which um creates this certain like sonic rapping um mm. that holds in such a, a loving way um and i feel like that can be largely attributed to the warmth of the mix as well how did you how did you like melt all of all of the guitars kind of together um in the mix the way that i picture it in my head because you're mentioning this like using mixing as an instrument or something like that for anybody listening josh and i have a history when when we both were first starting to learn how to produce and mix things and, you know, like being able to do it in our bedroom or whatever, we were around each other a lot. So we got peeks into how each other likes to write and how each other likes to move and whatever. It's always just been a part, it's always just been a part of the process. So it's, so it's not even like, like when I'm doing something like the guitar tones or something like that, it almost feels like purely, (laughs) <laughs> instinctual or just in, yeah. intuitive you know what i mean like it, yeah. it almost just feels like like i'm not even thinking about like um which sometimes can come back to bite you later if you know <laughs> of course like i i don't think by any means that when i make those decisions that it's a perfect decision but it just feels right in the moment for yeah. you know to put in the little like ee- like those little <laughs> guitar parts in this song I love those so much. There's like <laughs> soaring pitches that rise and fall. Are those played? Those are played in your guitar. Yeah, that's like that's literally just me like plucking one of the strings. Yeah, and th- it's like a it's just a different use of the whammy bar. Yeah, yeah. And then there will be like when it does the uh, you let me in on the joke bits, chords overlaying the plucky guitar that remains throughout the rhythm guitar. There's chords being played on the guitar that are like wah pedal all the, or like maybe not all the way down, but like, but like very much filter filtering the guitar sound. And then me like strumming the chord and just like very quickly, like whammying like, mm. so that it sounds like a vibrato electric piano yeah. kind of, but like I wanted it, but I wanted to just like try to make that sound f- doing a completely different thing that, d- you know, doesn't necessarily make that much sense, but for just for fun and just for me and just to kind of feel it's be like, eh, let me see if I can get away with this. You know, it's just like, it's just like, like <laughs> and, and then like really mixing it down and doing like, you know, putting like one, uh, like recording recording that all the way through twice for the right and left ear and you know what i mean like that's basically mm. what that is but um yeah as far as like shaping the guitar tones this one also came very quickly it was just like i think because i loved the sound of the fender so much i you know what i mean it's like first new guitar in 7 years or something like that it's like you're just so in love with how buttery it is that uh that I'm really just trying to when I'm recording the guitars on this song really just trying to be like however buttery this can feel however like smooth and kind of like even with all the noise even with all the like you know you can hear so much like white noise in the track which I love I'm glad about that I kept that in there for a yeah. reason but like sounding so buttery within that like kind of a thing i think you need that that breath too Mm -hmm. um but so so the most of the guitars were like run through your pedal board into the 
into your interface, like record it that way, more of like a direct in thing versus like virtual effects. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's something I've been trying to do with the songs that I've been recording recently. Um, Mm -hmm. that's happened more steady from like hide and seek. Definitely the guitars in that they went, it went through the pedal board, but was I actually using any of the pedals is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, and up to now when I'm recording something, it's just more exciting for me to be like, okay, I made the decision with the hardware, you know, and I have to live with it. You know what I mean? Like that, that kind of thing, like mix, mix the sort of things that sound really demo quality with the things to (laughs) me that sound like catchy, but it still has this kind of like grimy thing going on this like quality that's a little bit rough around the edges yeah one of my favorite uh like grittier sounds on this is those like um synth warbles that sound almost like a bit modular you probably know what i'm talking about they're at they're at um 345 i forget what is it the like like those little bits yeah i've been led to you and I want a joke Keep on letting me in I love getting to know you What were those? I'm pretty sure they were guitar Because I remember I do remember being like Oh dude, you know No one's gonna know No one's gonna figure that out You know (laughs) (laughs) I gotcha (laughs) There's a cool balance uh, From this sort of like control and also playfulness and looseness. One of my one of my favorite sounds is right at the end when you're when you're doing those like additional rhythmic decorations. They start to come in and there's this like what sounds like soft vocal percussion. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And then eventually there's the there's the clinking glass. Mm-hmm. I love the clinking glass so much. <laughs> it's so dude, good, <laughs> dude. That might have been just for you, you know. It's I put beautiful. that in so light. <laughs> and then the way the song fades out is weird too. Like done in a done in a weird way. It sounds like everything becomes more atmospheric when those percussive elements come in. Yeah. I like bounce the track to my iTunes, put it on my iPod, so then put my iPod through the pedal board and put like the reverb up on my pedal board and then just like manually controlled it filtering with the wah pedal and then just like crossfaded the actual full song with that uh thing and like faded it out it's like it's again not uh you know these are not the right way to do anything not that i believe there's a right way but uh it's the dirtball method yeah, dude. Yeah, exactly. And it sounds like I love it. You know what I mean? I think it sounds really cool and and uh, and pretty. There's a million different ways to get there that were probably much easier than that. But it was like, you know, if you got the time, you might as well just give it a go. Maybe let's talk about the lyrics a little bit. What does Can't Kid the Moon feel like it it means to you right now? Oh, just like you can't. um, You can't fool natural order or disorder like you can't you can't you know you're a part of that in in a greater context it's like you know man's trying to overcome or overtake nature is foolish (laughs) so like yeah you can't so in that you know applying that in this case it's like when you're feeling that like natural attraction to somebody, uh, mm. you can't like fake it. You know, people play a lot of games when 
they are attracted to people you will become overwhelmed by the sense of <laughs> you know what i mean by the sense of things outside of your own thinking mind or whatever yeah pulling you closer that. yeah i love that in in context to the archetype of the moon especially like the moon as as um it's like in the night sky, like, you you know, the sun has become very familiar to us as, as the moon has as well. But I feel like the moon in the night sky, there's a greater contrast between the moon and the night sky. So it just feels like a very, I don't know, it's, it feels like um, it, it places you in where you are. It places you in the space that you're currently consuming when looking at it in a very particular way. Mm. Um, and... I don't know. I just, I like that. I like that along with just this, this idea of, of getting to know something and getting to know someone. And when you first started telling me about the song before I actually like heard it or, or like, um, watch the video or, or, um, read the lyrics or anything like that, I, I thought it was kid comma the moon. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Dude. Dude, totally. Um, yeah, because it's a because gonna... fra- nobody uses that phrase, you know. It's like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I think it's used in a Frank Sinatra song, which I don't even know if hit, you know, if that's like a, in a song that was originally by him or somebody that yeah. like he covered or something. But like, you know, we don't use that phrase. Like, can't kid the moon, or or <laughs> what are you trying to kid the moon? You know. <laughs> Um, the, uh, I love getting to know you, or I guess that's the final lyric, but the, um, the varied vocals on you kind of at, at the end of each section, um, the way that they sort of enter throughout the song, um, and change the harmonies, um, and the melodies that sort of change on that word Mm. is, is so gorgeous and i feel like it's it's like the without talking about any of the the other lyrics i feel like that is like the embodiment of um a lot of the themes that you're exploring um but especially when when someone is familiar to you um but you're still discovering new things about them um Mm. which is such a, a magical uh thing to to be a part of and yeah, I don't know. I I feel like the the playfulness um, and the variations of uh, melodies and harmonies on you kind of captures that in a really special way. Um, yeah, I I feel that way too. It's interesting. Like it wasn't necessarily a conscious decision. I mean, I've been mm-hmm. trying to lean away from, especially the the conscious decision. I guess in that being. I don't want to copy and paste vocals anymore. Yeah. Like I used to do that for hooks and stuff like that, but now it's just like it's boring. Like if even if you're saying the exact same thing and just it just there's slight changes just based on the way you feel it at that point in the song or something. It's just mm-hmm. like those can be like really special moments, you know? And something yeah. like that is like I feel the same way about it, but it wasn't calculated. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I didn't think yeah. like I didn't intellectualize like you know, I'm going to celebrate <laughs> this person and getting to know them by blank, blank. It just comes out that way. And then you're yeah. like, you know, you, and then you're just, you're just like, oh man, that's like, that's so good. How that, you know, how that fits or how that like, um, yeah. cause I feel that same way. Those are like some of my favorite parts of the song are, are the little harmonies and little like, uh, or the whispery ones, dude. Like when I was getting to know you, like very, like yeah. very, very quiet. Like I don't ever hear people doing that. Like w- you just whisper something or just say something yeah. so soft. Like I'm into it, dude. I'm into it. <laughs>
Did you experience a feeling of rightness at any particular point with the song? Like when you were, say, when you were um, lying back with your feet up, listening to it back? Mm. Or do you, I mean, maybe that's just a general question, because I feel like I, with my own, with my own stuff, um, there's always kind of a, a particular point um, where, it, where it all feels, or I'm, I'm very aware of, of kind of the rightness of, of, um, of this thing that's, that's kind of, uh, that I've arrived at. And yeah, do you have, do you have that experience as well? Did you have that experience with this song? Yeah, th- yeah. I I think I would I feel like I would describe it as just like you know, another thing that might sound pretentious or something, but I'm I'm truly not like egoically connected to this statement that I'm about to make, which is the idea of like it felt like the song existed before I felt like the song mm. has existed the whole time. You know what I mean? Yeah, like when yeah, you finish yeah. working on a song and you're just like, wow, this this feels like how would I how would I know life before? You know what yeah. I mean? Like the Well, like, that is the feeling. It's like it's like, ah, of course. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Ex- like the simple whatever, like the keeping it simple and then you're just like, yeah. "Oh my god, like this is yeah, this works or whatever." But mm. definitely definitely had that feeling um throughout i mean i felt i feel that with all the stuff that i've been working on oddly enough like i told uh i think i told we were on the phone a couple of days ago and i think i told you that i was like listening back to all of the stuff that i've been working on Mm -hmm. uh or put out hide and seek naked forever and sophia included and listening back to those in a certain succession and just being like first time I've worked on multiple things and I'm just like, damn, this feels, yeah, this feels right. Or this feels like, like I'm not in my critiquing headspace when I'm listening to them. I'm just like enjoying them as a listener. Like I'm just like able to be like, like, uh, observing and from not from a point that's trying to edit but observing from a a place that's that's like purely appreciative and i think a lot of that has to do with like the with like the collaboration of these things too like kid the moon is was all me or whatever but like everything else i've been working on somebody else has touched or i've sent to them and been like do you have any ideas for this? And maybe the idea make, finds a way in, or maybe it doesn't, you know what I mean? But it's, but it's just the idea of the, it being a more collaborative thing, a thing that's greater than one person's, you know, ideas behind what the song should be or something like that. But yeah, but yeah definitely, definitely felt that uh, with this song and still do, still do like, you know, when I'm not in the throes of, of, doing all this like promotional work behind the video and the song and whatever, I definitely will, uh, once again, return to the place where, where I've had a little bit of space from it and I'm listening to it and, and I'm, I'm sure I'll just be like, yeah, hell yeah, dude. Like this is just like, this is rock and roll or like I play it like uh, on my guitar, like every day or every couple of days I'm like, play a a more stripped down version and it's like and I love it you know I still I love singing it and I love like the way that it moves so uh yeah man for sure for sure rightness you know whatever whatever you want to call it like delight yeah dude yeah it's Mm. I definitely feel that with this one let's talk about the video okay who who is involved in the making of the video? Um, it was me and uh, Mike Manor. I did all the filming, editing, um, the little animated parts, 
and Mike Mike touched it up. Mike made it. I mean, I when I sent it to Mike, I was like, I was happy with it, but I was just like, I don't really, you know, this could be much. This could look a little bit better, look a little more interesting. And he he did the he did all the coloring, like all the all the stuff that makes it pop is mm-hmm. is uh is Mike, who I'm yeah gets a special shout out. Forever grateful. It's a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm glad. It's a lot of fun to watch you dance. And uh, <laughs> the like, <laughs> I like I like the part where uh, it says dance break. Feel free to groove at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. And I'm I'm sh- like I'm I'm well into grooving at that point, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. I just <laughs> wanted to encourage you know you know how it is when you go out and there's people grooving and then there's people on the side who really feel like they can't dance like they're they've convinced themselves like i cannot dance i have a special problem with which i cannot express myself in that way i just want people to feel like they can dance at any moment yeah yeah it's an invitation i feel like dancing is this like ultimate freedom to me to, and same. it's so special. It's also so special to watch others dance. I think it's like um, universal in terms of other animals too. Mm. It's like something almost like uh, primordial about it maybe. But I really like dancing. I feel like it's so dancing is like integral for me to feel uh, to feel my whole self. Mm-hmm. Dude, same. Same, 100%. And a recent discovery for me, too. I didn't start expressing myself in that way. Or, you know, using it as a way to just love just love your body and just get, just get the blood pumping, you know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't mm. start doing that until... Until uh, probably a couple of years ago or something. Um, and it's the best dude it's the best i mean i'm not like busting a move in this video at all it's very it's very much like it's like mom dancing you know what i mean it's like when when moms put on like you know <laughs> some some music like from their childhood and they just like are slowly like just grooving like doing whatever they're doing who choreographed the the music video <laughs> If only I knew the name of like a great choreographer that I could just drop right here and yeah. and uh, <laughs> and try to convince people like, oh no, yeah, they were behind all of that precision. All of that is pure precision. Where did the where did all the anatomic props come from? Not not as a subject, as as the actual objects. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this was like the kind of these were the kind of thing like things that made me be like oh man like now we can make a video like a video a video is you know i don't want it to just be me dancing around especially it's a six minute song you know what i mean (laughs) it's like it can't just be that uh even though i had that idea in my head that i was like i should be like more comfortable in front of the camera and just like have have some fun and put something together because music videos are fun to make and and uh i'm sure this one yeah with the cinematic beginning and everything i was just like oh this could be there could be something cool for this um but the real kicker was like my uh roommate bill <clears throat> some of you who are into uh visual effects may know this man as bill gazer uh he's he's a uh, visual effects uh master um but he collects these like older like anatomy models once i was like oh man like like looking at them closely and being like if you zoom into these they look like landscapes like they you know what i mean like the kind of idea of like I mean that also happens if you if you look very closely at like your skin or something. It just looks like it has like crevices and markings like the surface of a planet or uh 
something like that. But these were these were just like paired with the idea of getting to know you, you know. Yeah. Like kind of ironic and silly, but then also just like beautiful uh you know, up close imagery that kind of just looks like the peaks and valleys of like a human anatomy. Mm-hmm. I just thought that that would be like really cool. And that's, that was the inception of like, Oh, I think I should do a video now. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I think yeah. having that in there will be the thing that makes it fun for me. So the black and white footage at the beginning in the end, or especially the end that like, um, cellular, swallow oh yeah where'd you get the footage from oh dude cup of coffee cup of coffee zoomed in cup of coffee and then and then i just like it was just like bubbles at the top of the coffee that just like swallowed the other bubbles and i was just like oh man like that would be cool like if we could kind of overlay that i saw it in like a um i forget the uh like you know me and you are criterion criterion uh junkies from time to time i saw it in like a a godard movie a couple years ago it was like two Mm. people at a cafe having a conversation just about like the universe and so many of the shots were just of the coffee that they were drinking and just like just the swirling that I that that really stuck with me, and I was mm-hmm. I was just like, oh man, I would love to implement that as like, especially at the end, it's like a it looks like the brain of you know my form in that video as I like turn to the side, it looks like the brain, and then it fades out, and the brain just like takes that thing that you know also kind of reminds me of the moon, like the this little thing that's outside of this other thing that looks mm-hmm. like it's revolving around them. And then they, they both join. Uh, yeah. Cup of coffee, baby. That's mm-hmm. it. Simple as all, that. I want a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, dude. Most of the things that aren't me in that video are up close shots of <laughs> like objects and things. <laughs> well, Very things up close when, things. <laughs> things are interesting when you look really close at them, you know? Dude, that's the, that's the dang truth. My uh, as a last praise for the video, I especially uh, well the animations are great, and I especially love the the colors that sort of spark with your hips when when you're like swaying swaying toward the end. <laughs> the little so boop boop boops, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the boop boop boops. I was so happy with those. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I did that as like a test. I was like, because the ending was kind of, it's like, I need to kind of add some sort of like animation in there, but. It's kind of like a cute thing, like a cutesy, like kind of yeah. cute, cute thing. Yeah, a little, little cute, well, you know, little cutesy cute, little cutesy cute boy, little cutesy cute move. That's it, that's <laughs> what, yeah, I thought, it, I thought it would be, uh, I thought it would be kind of funny. And then it ended up being funny. My favorite are the spoons. <laughs> the dancing spoons <laughs> with the glasses. Yeah. Those are my yeah. favorites. Mama, can't get the move. so. Simpson and Joshua Tarantino. You can see all of Josh's work at joshuatarantino.com. You can see my work at derricksimpsonmusic.com. Go listen to Kid the Moon. It's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful day. Go have fun. Go talk to your family. Go talk to your loved ones. Much love. Be safe in the streets. Be safe in the sheets. Be yourself. Okay, bye. bye.